Morning YouTubers, welcome back to the Davy Brown 990 restoration. If it's your first time here, my name's Barry. Today we are going to do some painting, hopefully. Been asked in one of the comments by uh, David about what we do for painting and that. So today I'm going to do a brief video on mixing some paints up, getting the gun ready. I'll not do applying the paint, but I'll show you the after results because we're going to do some primer on the, remember the lifting links we did last time? We're going to do primer on that and chocolate and then we're going to whack some chocolate onto this because I say I do like the batch paint because it's easier and it's more efficient with materials um, and paint is quite expensive. So let's get on with it. Let's start with our guns. I set my guns up there. I've got two guns. I'm only going to use one, I'm going to show you the other one and I'll tell you why I'm only going to use the little one today. The little touch-up gun. We'll go through that now. Right, this is my little touch-up gun. And I find it easier to be using small guns for small components. It only holds 100mm in the bottle and it's probably going to be enough today. So on the bottom of this, I've got a moisture trap, pressure gauge. What I normally do is I open the air valve here on the gun fully. I normally open the spray width fully and I put one and a half turns on the needle from so that if I was to back that off now that this the needle one this trigger will go back in one and a half turns I'm going to turn that down slightly today because I do want a small a smaller narrower field the pressure of the gun is controlled from here and we're going to be running at about 30 psi today. Again, a lot of a lot of it. I'm, by by the way, I am no professional painter. I can paint good enough to get away with retractors. Um, but a lot of it, like the air pressure, the mixtures, and the way it comes out the gun, it's a suck it and see job, and you change things according to the results that you have and what's coming out the gun. What I would normally do is once I get the paint in, check my pressures on my gauge, make sure that we're getting the right pressure in there. And then I use a bit of cardboard, normally off an old cereal box or something, and I spray a pattern onto that. I'll show you that after when we get ready. Um, you can check to see if the paint is actually atomizing, and that'll normally tell you if your air pressure is too high, too low. Or your spray patterns wrong. It'll also give you the width of your spray pattern, which can be adjusted through this little nozzle, this little thing here. But if you start shortening up your spray pattern, you need to reduce your air pressure accordingly. Because as you tighten this in, your air pressure will increase. So you need to check your air pressure, bring it back down. You may also, and probably will, need to turn your needle in to reduce the amount of paint. Otherwise you'll end up with runs. Right, so that's the guns. I've got, this is my big gun. I've got a bigger gun for the bigger panels, such as the gearbox and casings and engines and that. That's great for large areas. But I find, me personally, I kind of get this down to be the level of control that I can with this one for small areas. And considering we're only doing the links today, and as I say, we're doing this little valve I need to be able to get in to areas under here in here up here and therefore find it easier and more controllable to have less pain coming out and a smaller area because you do end up with runs and that you either have to tolerate them or you got to wipe the whole lot off and start all over again mix some pots bought a load of these off the internet and all I do is I use that there I go to 100 normally with them um, with parts it's either 100 or 200 mils that I'm mixing I don't mix up a whole tin because I can never ever use a whole tin in one sitting so we're going to put 100 mil of primer in this one I've then got an old case off a syringe and I put me thinners in there because it's nice and easy to measure it and then just get your thinners drop it down on top of your paint give it a good stir 
today we're going to be putting red oxide primer on I'm not affiliated with these people whatsoever but I have used their paints in the past and I find them really good especially for historical engines or classic engines Craftmaster engine enamel is the chocolate that will be going straight on when we finish this lot That'll do it, 100 mil. Should have had that in the house warming up. I've got the parts in the house on radiators warming up. Now we're going to do 20 mil. I'm going to put 20 mil in here today. I normally put 15 mil in. But because it's cold and that's fairly thick, and as soon as these stones will start spraying it, so I'm going to put 20 mil spirits in there, add into the paint, and everything's going to get a good stir. There we go, and add a good stir up with me. Highly efficient chopsticks. Now, say I should have took that pin in the house last night. Let it warm up. This might still be a bit too thick yet. We'll soon know. What I do? You get an you get an eye for these things. Yes, that's still a bit thick. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put another 5 mil in. So let's see what this hat comes out like. So you get a feel for it when you're stirring it, you, you know when it's right. Yes, there is totally correct values if you have heated spray booths and you, everything's at the right temperature. But when you're working in a the garage, there's probably two degrees outside. Look at that, that's better. Oh, that was, that was lovely, right. spray pattern might try and get every last drop I hate where some paint it's just so expensive and it's windy outside today so I've got me a bit of cardboard, got me a gun, and just check with air pressure. If you depress your trigger halfway, you can set up your air pressure without having the without the paint coming out. You do that and just... I 
it's about 25, 27 there. I'm going to do a test spray, see what it pops up like. Now, you see there, there is no speckles or spots, there is no clearly defined end to the spray pattern. So the paint's atomizing. So we're doing all right at the minute. What I'll try to do now is reduce the width of that spray pattern. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the control valve, my spray control in halfway. I'm going to turn the paint down, quarter of a turn. I'm going to check the air pressure. Back to 27, and we'll do it again. There. See the smaller bit? We'll leave it on the smaller bit, because don't forget this is the links of painting, and they are fairly narrow. So I don't want paint, this is going to spray paint all over the place. This is just going to keep it fairly tight on the links. So we're going to go with this setting. I've wiped the other three. These have just come off the radiators in the house. Um, I need to get a bit of tape on there. And this is acetone on a rag. And I'm just degreasing them as best I can. So we'll get it all nice and clean and hopefully we'll get half the paint to stick to it in all the right places. in the house for two reasons. I want to get them to sweat a bit because steel or cast absorbs moisture when it's in its bare state like this. And when you warm them up you see it comes out in the form of condensation. If you can you don't want that condensation underneath your paint. So we've got our bits hanging up. I'm going to quickly lash a coat of primer on here, very thin coat, give it 10-15 minutes to go off, you know when it goes off because it'll go dull, or you can touch it somewhere where it's not going to matter, and once it goes sticky or tacky, then you can put the second coat on, we're going to put two coats on here today, and then we're going to go to chocolate. First coat on. That should dry off fairly quickly there because they all these components are still slightly warm. So first coat's on. What we'll do is we'll give it 10 minutes or so and then we will come back in, give it another quick spray over the top, give it another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but in that meantime we will be mixing the chocolate brown paint up. Not be long. Before you put your paint gear away, take all your bits. If you're painting like this indoors, when maybe were one light at the top, if you take all your bits outside, have a look at them, check them for bits that you've missed. You can't really see in here, but on this bit, you can see in there. Back of there, the mist on the handle here. There's a little bit there. So I'm just gonna we'll correct that before we go on. Put that drying off nicely. So now we're gonna mix up our chocolate paint. Get the final coats ready. We're gonna mix this a bit thinner because this paint is slightly thinner, and I've had this in the house warming up. So we're gonna start off with five percent thinners and possibly end up at 10%. We'll see what it mixes up like. So we'll get this ready, and then we'll crack on and get the job done, get it all finished. I'm gonna give this a good stir. It separates out quite quickly when it's standing in the tin. You can see this is a much thinner paint. So again, we're gonna do 100 mil. Get my glasses on. Do 100 mil, 5%. Thinners to start with. Mm. 
nice and easy. That will do it. See, I've had that in the house warming up. I should really have done that with that. That primer should have been in last night. I'm going to put 5%, 5 percent, 5 mil. There we go. Yes. This is a thinner paint. And what you don't, you don't want it literally pouring all over the place. A good stir. Looking good. I'm going to do the same little test. Tiny bit in the gun, tiny bit, and then we're going to test spray it on the card. That'll do it. I only want to know before we commit this. See, it's not atomizing properly. We've got flex, so we're gonna, what we'll do, turn the air up, another go. That's a bit better, but I think we need a bit thinner, another five mil in here. thing in the world you want is thin paint because it's just gonna take ages to cover. That's better. That's better. Happy with that. Pop that there. Not what we'll do is we'll put. Helps if we put the paint in the gun, doesn't it? Right, so put our paint in our gun. So that the wind doesn't turn it over and lose our paint on the floor. Pop it there. Pop the paint in. And we're going up. Right, first coat of brown on. It is thin, which is the whole idea, because you want this to go to flash fairly quickly. That one started flashing already. You can see it's gone and dull. I've literally just finished spraying this one. You can see how it's still shining. Right, first coat on. Give it a little while. That second coat on. These are probably going to take three or four coats but we've got plenty of paint mixed up so we'll just crack on and get it done so I've got some spare paint left so what I'm going to do I'm going to paint this 
This is the draft sensing unit. The Welsh plug's missing out the back. I've got the cardboard stuck in there. Stop the paint going in. Um, but I'm going to paint this. I've got it on a lazy Susan, so I can just be in one position and turn it round. But rather than waste the paint, we're going to crack on. I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Back in a moment. Right, second coat. This is why I like lazy Susans. You can turn it around, you can stay in one place when you're spraying, you're not fighting to get into little corners. Spray the cylinder head and everything on this one. But uh, it just makes life that little bit easier. Especially when you're in a confined space. Never mind. So this is the next morning, and as you see, everything's been finished, everything's painted. Uh, it's gone off hard enough to handle quite safely. Uh, they're all screwed back together, and they're just they'll be hanging there, with, probably for about a week to harden. Yesterday, we just got cleaned up. I started to clean up. My wife came in with a post, and in the post was the Welsh plugs for the back of the draft unit. Anyway, what I've done is I've painted up with primer on the inside that'll get knocked into position today and get primer outside and top coated outside today and it'll be that'll be that finished. Then that'll get wrapped up, put to bed. So I think we'll call that a wrap then mower. Everything's sorted out, everything's tidied up and put away. Hope you come back and visit one on the next one. See you soon.